Hello friends, welcome to my channel Music and Tech. Again, this is Kevin and uh, for today I'm going to talk about setting up your uh, gadgets, your computer for a Zoom meeting. So if you're a musician or a singer or if you're just a teacher who wants to teach music, then this is the video for you. So um, this is a practical guide and there will be two ways I'm going to show you how to set it up. One is just by set using your audio interface and the second setup would be combining an audio interface with an audio mixer. There is an advantage of between the two and um, um, I'm going to show you um, practically and you can see it by yourself why it's more advantageous to have an audio mixer combined with your audio interface. So for now, let's talk about setting up your Zoom meeting with an audio interface. So if you would take a look, that's my audio interface, a small black box. And then I have my microphone connected to the audio interface input one. It's an XLR cable. And then another XLR cable connected to my keyboards. And then if you would see my gain for both, both input one and two, they are they are set at uh, 50 percent okay and then if I play my keyboards you will see that the peak indicator is lighting up it means there's too much audio going in into my um, into my audio interface so if you if you don't adjust this in your zoom you would have crackling or you, the clip or the sound will be clip and it doesn't sound nice um, for your viewers so I'm going to adjust my gain to around around 25% and let's see how it works there looks nicer okay so with that setting on my audio interface let's now move to setting up your Zoom audio settings. Let's now move to the Zoom user interface and then click settings, click audio. Okay, for my monitor speakers, I'm using an audio interface quad capture. There are other selections here, but because I'm using that, so I would click this. Then my microphone is connected to the audio interface, so I would select this as well. Okay, please make sure that this one is unticked or not enabled because Zoom with its algorithms, if you have too much sound coming into Zoom, it would try to suppress it. So it will just automatically adjust so that the volume that's going into Zoom is somehow like uh, uniform. But we don't do that because if you're playing music, it will affect your um, sound and it would sound weird sometimes and it's not pleasant to our audience then suppress background noise because you have to choose at least one so just select the lowest for music and professional audio make sure that you enable original sound the original sound that you're generating would be coming into zoom and then click high fidelity music and unclick and tick echo cancellation because again if you are playing those uh, large sounds like drums zoom would somehow try to suppress that or any echo would be cancelled so we don't want that and for this one stereo you have to enable this so i think that's about it for the audio settings we just go and start our meeting So now, um, one more thing for the audio settings. Please click this and make sure that, you're, that you selected your audio interface for sound. So now let's try to record our video. 
Recording in progress. Yeah. So now so that you would hear how it sounds like, I would disable my live. So now it's just um, coming from my, um, it's the raw sound that you would hear from my voice going into Zoom. This is how it sounds like. So if you're not so happy with the sound, you can increase the volume of your mic by increasing the, the gain at your audio interface. Test mic, test mic. So now it's louder. Test mic. I'm increasing my mic gain to as much as uh, I don't see any peak indicator lighting up on my audio interface. Then let's play. So if you would hear it, your voice sounds raw. There's no uh, effects like reverb, echo, or delay, or whatever that suits you. And then um, in terms of your piano, there's no effects as well. Then the issue with the audio interface is that, um, for, my, uh, for example, for my audio interface, I have only um, four inputs. Some may say I can only connect three instruments because one is for the mic and then the other two connections which will be connected behind um, doesn't have the gain so it will be a difficult uh, task for you to mix the sound of three instruments and your voice. So, so that's the disadvantage but the good thing about the audio interface is that when it brings the sound into your audio interface the sound is really um, it's very it's very good the sound that goes into your zoom is very good but somehow there's no effects that's why you need an audio mixer to do that okay so now i have my second setup this is my audio mixer is a zoom live track l12 and then this is connected to my audio interface so what happens is this two cables are all the outputs left and right, then it would go to the input one and input two of my audio interface, which I have shown a while ago. And then uh, for this mixer, I have um, eight mono channels. So you would see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then my dynamic microphone is connected to channel one. So this one is for your phantom power because I'm using a dynamic mic. I'm not going to enable this. Then for my mic, I would set the gain to around 60%, 25% on compressor nap. And then on my slider, the volume would be at zero. Then I have another connection here this is coming from another computer where my Ableton Live is. So for this side, I'm going to play tracks coming from Ableton. Then if you have other uh, instruments connected, for example, you can put the guitar here, the cajon here, and then you can put other microphones here. So if you're using a condenser mic again, you have to enable your phantom power. So for my channel seven, I have my uh, Ableton connected. So I'm going to play tracks here. So my gain is around only uh, at 20%. And then my um, slider at around minus 25. So let's see. So I think the sound is good enough. If I'm going to increase that, that's too loud. So you just leave it maybe up to here so that it doesn't overpower too much of your vocal. 
difficult so you just try to reduce it that's why the gain is somewhere around 20% only you see every time the drums is hit you can see the signal peaking so we still try to reduce that yeah so now it's better So moving on, on our channel 8, we have our keyboards connected. So I set my gain only around 25%. I don't need a compressor knob. And then my slider around, now it's around minus 5. Let's try to play and see how it sounds like. I think it's too loud, so I have to reduce the slider. Going to maybe minus 15. That's good enough. So, from these three connections, I have um, mixed my audio so that there would be a balance sound, balance sound from piano to my tracks to my keyboards. But later, we'll try to hear again how it would sound like. And then, this part, I'm going to discuss again um, what is all these things, these buttons. I'm going to discuss in my future video, I will have a more detailed discussion on how to use the Zoom Live Track L12. And then um, going to my audio interface, I have the left and right audio output. So the left would go to input one of my audio interface, and then my right output would go to my input two of my audio interface. And then again, I would just put at 50 percent then this blue slider is the one that would provide the um, echo or the reverb or the delay of your sound you can even manipulate your voice uh, to set the low mid high frequencies and then you can even select what type of effects will you use so again i'm going to discuss this uh, um, audio mixer in my future video. So very important also, we have to make sure that this one is around, I think 75%, so that the sound would be enough, good enough that when your audience hears it at the, at the Zoom session, then it's, it's good enough for your uh, live performance or whatever. Okay. I think that's it. We go back to our Zoom. Hello, test mic. Hello, test mic. So now I'm going to, you can hear the voice coming from my Zoom. That's the output that's coming out of your Zoom. So I think the delay is too much. We're going to reduce that. Hello, test mic. Yes, so now it's better, I think. Yeah. So as before, when I, I'm just using the audio interface, the voice sounds too raw. So now you have effects there in place so that the sound or the quality of your voice is nicer. We try to play something. So that's my tracks coming in. I think the level of my track is good enough. So okay, let's try playing something. I think the sound of my keyboard is still too strong, so I'm going to reduce my sliders for the keyboards. Do it 
begin. So that's the drums kicking in. So again, you see that the sound of using an audio mixer going into your audio interface before it goes to Zoom is better than just using an audio interface alone because the sound would be mixed prior to um, the audio going into Zoom and an audio mixer is the one that can do that. I, I know that there is like sometimes an, a digital mixer that is sometimes available for um, audio interfaces, but I think having a hardware is better than using a digital audio mixer. So using an audio mixer would balance the sound or the, all the elements of your inputs before it goes into Zoom. Um, before we have experienced that sometimes the sound of our guitar especially, if you're using an electric guitar, uh, it's quite difficult to suppress the sound of that one if it's too loud uh, for the vocals or for the keyboards or for the tracks. That's why having an audio mixer would try to uh, blend it out so that the sound would, uh, would be balanced for all the elements of your music. So I think, friends, that's about it for today. I hope please like or subscribe if you like this video and if you could share it to your fellow musicians or singers that would be helpful. So thank you so much. Good day. Bye-bye.